In part two of my Draw This 50th episode special, we're going to animate a digital painting using Adobe After Effects. The first thing that we'll do is we'll prepare the animation by merging some of the layers and removing the backgrounds. So let's merge the ground, hills, and tree layers together into a single layer. And then we'll move the hills far above the sky layer and we'll merge those two layers. And we'll call that background. Let's hide the canvas layer to remove the background. And let's hide all the layers except for the foreground. Next, let's save this as a PNG. Make sure Save Alpha is checked. And then we'll do the same thing with the remaining layers. We'll hide the foreground and then save the background as its own PNG. We'll do the same thing with one of the clouds. We'll go ahead and crop off the extra area using the crop tool. Just drag a box around it and then click the check to cut off the extra. We'll save that as a PNG and we'll save the next cloud as a PNG. So now we're ready for After Effects. We can go ahead and open After Effects. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a new composition. So we'll click on New Composition. We want to use the preset HDTV 1080 29.97. Set the resolution to full if you have a fast computer or half if you have a slower computer. And we want the duration to be seven minutes long. So we have some different panels here. The little black box represents your video and your composition window. Below that is the timeline where you can place clips and on the left are your composition assets which we will drag our PNGs into. We'll drag each of those assets down onto the timeline and that will place them as layers just like they appear in Corel Painter. We want to make sure that the layer order is the same so we'll have the clouds in the middle, the foreground on the top, and the background on the bottom. Let's go ahead and lock the foreground and background layers and then that'll allow us to move the clouds up without anything else interfering. So let's position the clouds kind of where we want them. And then we can go ahead and start animating now. Let's save our project first by going to File, Save. And save this in the same folder with all of your PNG assets. Now zooming in and out in After Effects works a little differently than it does in Painter. If you zoom in, it's going to take longer for your video to process, and that might make things slower. So keeping your view smaller generally makes things work faster. So let's go ahead and start animating. Let's select both of these clouds by holding shift and we'll drag them over while holding shift to put them off screen. We'll hit P on our keyboard to bring up the position and then we'll check this little stopwatch to create a keyframe. You can see it appears as a little diamond here. We'll hit S for scale and we'll add a scale keyframe as well. Then we'll move our playhead to the opposite end and let's add some more keyframes by clicking on these diamonds here. So now we have keyframes on both ends We'll need to hit P again and add another position keyframe. And then let's drag the clouds all the way over to the left while holding shift just to make sure they stay on that axis. And let's hit S for scale. And let's go ahead and we will scale them up a little bit. Let's just hold spacebar to pan over and select both of these and scale them up just a little bit holding shift so they don't squish. And now these keyframes will animate between each other. So they basically fill in all the gaps of the animation. So you just say, Where's the start point? It's over here on the right. Where's the end point? It's over here on the left. If you hit B, you'll create a beginning. If you hit N, you'll hit an end, and this creates a little area that you can preview. If you hit zero on your keyboard, it'll create a little mini preview. It'll take a while to kind of render the preview, and then it'll start to play full speed. If you find this is going really slow, set your resolution lower. Now locate the effects panel, which you can find under the window menu, effects and presets. So once you found that palette, you can search for Turbulent, which will bring up Turbulent Displace. You'll want to drag that over onto your cloud clip. So drag it over onto the timeline, onto the clip, and let go. You'll see that if you can look over in your Effect Controls panel, you'll see it added to the Turbulent Displace effect. And there's a lot of different properties we can use. So let's zoom in to 100% here so that we can see this a little bit better. And then let's start adding some animations to this effect. So let's move our playhead over to the beginning. And we'll go ahead and click this little triangle here to close the little options for that layer. We'll click the other triangle for the layer that we're working on just to open some more options. We want to be looking at Turbulent Displace. Let's set a keyframe for Evolution. And we'll move the playhead to the end of the composition and we'll add another keyframe. Now we want to just go ahead and crank this around a few times to about 10 revolutions, maybe 20 and then we'll bring the playhead back. And as we scrub through, you can see the effect is really extreme, but it's animating. So we'll wanna play with some of these settings. You can really experiment here. If you want it to be more turbulent, leave the settings higher. If you want it to be more subtle, set them lower. I'm gonna set this kind of low so that you can barely tell that it's moving. 
and it'll take a few tries to kind of test it out and play it and see how it works. So give it a few different tries, and then once you're happy with it, you can go ahead and stick with that. I think that looks pretty good. It's barely moving. You can barely tell that it's even moving at all, and I'm not really sure if it is, but I know that it is because I've put a little bit of effect on it. Now, fortunately, we can just copy and paste this effect onto the other cloud. So we'll hit Control C, we'll go to the other cloud layer, and we'll select that, and we'll go ahead and paste that effect into the effect controls palette for that cloud layer. And that'll give it the exact same effect settings that we added. So now if we scrub through, we can see that that cloud is animated as well. Now you're probably not seeing much going on. You'd have to watch really closely to see it moving. You can definitely set these settings higher on your end if you want your cloud to move more, but I don't want mine to move too much. I'm gonna unlock the foreground layer and I'm going to click on that layer and I'm going to search for a new effect. I'm going to search for rain. That'll give me a nice simulated rain effect. I'll drag that over onto the foreground layer and that adds the rainfall effect. Now you can experiment with this too. You can set this higher or lower depending on how much rain you want. I'm just gonna do these particular settings here which work pretty well. That'll give us some nice rain if we do a little bit of a preview here. Now you don't want these previews to be too big. I'm gonna add another effect which is called levels. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this scene get a little bit lighter and a little bit darker depending on the position of the clouds. So I'm gonna add a histogram keyframe at the beginning of the composition and then I'm going to just kind of toggle open these effects with the triangles here so I can see levels. I'm gonna move the playhead forward just a little bit, and then I'm going to add another keyframe just by moving the center slider on the histogram here to make it a little bit darker. I'll move the playhead forward again, and I'll make it even darker by moving that slider even more. So I'm gonna have kind of three levels here, bright, medium, and dark, and you can just copy and paste those keyframes, as you can see I'm doing here, and that makes really short work of it. So it's gonna kinda of cycle through light and dark. I'm gonna add a photo filter effect on that same foreground layer, and this will just kind of warm the scene. What I wanna do here is I want it to be warmer when it's brighter and not warm at all when it's darker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm basically just gonna add a keyframe for the density, and then I'm gonna make sure that that lines up with the keyframes that I used for levels. So where it's bright, I'm gonna make it warm, and where it's dark, I'm just not gonna have any of that effect at all. Now the last thing that this needs is some falling rain sound effects. So you can look online for free rain sound effects or you can record your own. Or if you have a YouTube account, you can look under Create in Creator Studio for the audio library and then look under Sound Effects and search for rain. These are all free sound effects that you can use. I like the light rain. It is a little short. Our composition is seven minutes and this is only a three minute clip so we will have to loop it. Since this isn't an audio tutorial, I'm not gonna get into the the principles of looping audio, I'm just gonna kind of do it here. But basically we wanna use keyframes to kind of cross fade these into each other so that you don't hear a hard transition when one clip ends and the next begins. So I've just done that by looking under the audio levels and adding keyframes just like I did with all of the other animations. We also wanna fade the audio out at the end of the composition and at the beginning of the composition. So we'll go ahead and do that as well. And then let's also have this fade in and out. So we'll go ahead and right click over on the timeline and we'll add a new solid. Make sure that it's set to black. And then this will add a black fill to the whole composition. This time we wanna add keyframes for the opacity. So hit T on your keyboard to bring up opacity. Set a couple keyframes so that it fades from 100% to zero. And then go ahead and do that on the opposite side as well. If you wanna make sure that these sync up with your audio, you can go ahead and toggle open your audio waveform so that you can see that as well. Now let's go ahead and prepare this for export since it's just about done. Let's go ahead and set our beginning and end points to the beginning and end of our composition. If you wanna make it shorter, you can do that by setting it shorter. And then we'll go ahead and just tidy up these layers here by closing the triangles and we'll go to File, Export. Then we'll choose Add to Adobe Media Encoder and what this will do is this is a separate program that will process your video into an actual movie. We'll choose the H.264 format and we'll select YouTube 1080 HD. That'll give us a nice high res quality video for YouTube. Make sure you're exporting audio and video and then click OK. Now when you click this play button it'll start rendering but it'll render faster if you go ahead and close After Effects first and anything else that's running in the background. It's going to take some time to render. It might take 30 minutes, it might take an hour. If it takes any longer than that, you may want to look at how to optimize your system for rendering video. And then navigate to the folder where you rendered the video. It may be in a subfolder that says AME. 
And let's go ahead and play that. And there you go, we have a finished digital painting that we also animated. Alright, so that brings us to the end of my 50th episode of Draw This. I really appreciate you watching this series, and I hope you'll join me every Tuesday for another new episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.